folks, Prairie Fiddler coming to you from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and uh, coming to you from my newly renovated workshop and uh, I guess studio, I guess you'd call it, although I'm probably the only one that plays in here other than people testing out instruments. Um, anyways, I, I just thought I'd uh, uh, put out a video here to show some of the changes that I've made and, and uh, I've tried to draw everything together and get uh, get my violins out on display. So, uh, um, and uh, just for interest, I uh, thought I'd show you this little violin that I've been working on here today. Uh, this one has had a few little problems with it. Um, it just, just came in this morning. So, I like to put uh, anything I sell, any, any instruments that I sell, I like to put them in the best playable condition that, uh, that they can possibly be. And I won't sell anything that doesn't have um, good playability and decent sound. So this one here, um, it needed, uh, needed a bridge cut and the sound post uh, had to be replaced and uh, just a little bit of work on, on pegs and uh, the fingerboard. <clears throat> there was, a, there was a, a sharp, kind of a rough and sharp edge right here where the finger, where, where, the, where your finger is. So uh, all of these things I, I like to address and, uh, and then put it out hopefully to a, a new home and somebody that's going to enjoy it. So that's a little uh, three-quarter violin, and uh, that one's unnamed. There's no there's no brand in it, but uh, it it seems uh, reasonably good. Uh, some of the you'll see some of my tools here, um, some of the ones that I use a lot, the sound post tools, fairly specialized tools. There's um, there's uh, oh the uh, thickness. The thickness uh, caliper for testing thicknesses on plates and uh, oh I have a Japanese pull saw very very sharp very expensive little saw sharp and it has a really really thin cut so uh, that was good work uh, I've got a selection of files and chisels and um, um, very sharp carving knife that's a, a must, especially for things like bridges, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of the tools that we, or the, the instruments and tools that we use in violin making are, are homemade jigs. And uh, so here, here, this is just a jig that I've made for, uh, for uh, making bridges. And so it, uh, it marks the height of the bridge that you want to, that you uh, gives you a, a rough idea of where to make the first cuts. Um, a peg reamer. Peg reamers are very, very uh, well. They're not super expensive, but they're fairly precision. They're a they're a one to thirty ratio, which is the the modern uh, ratio for violin for pegs. Uh, the old ones used to be a, a much uh, more beveled uh, angle. And uh, I think these ones probably hold better. So there's that. Um, what else do we have? Uh, one of the things that I've, I've put together over the time that I've been doing uh, violin repairs and tinkering with them uh, is the, the specs for violins. Now, all of the measurements, everything is very, very precise from bridges to sound posts to um, string height to... Um, plate thicknesses, all of these things, and they're all prescribed on uh, uh, for different sizes. Uh, so this one, where I put together some of the uh, uh, thicknesses that you would typically see on plates, although I'm learning more how to uh, thickness the plates by, by sound. And so uh, uh, here's a little tap toner. something that I would use to uh, tap tone the plates. 
So uh, yeah, I've got a well, yeah, I've got a selection of uh, bridges and and uh, nuts and saddles and fine tuners that sort of thing. But uh, one violin here, I'm actually really excited about this one. This is a it's a Czech violin that I picked up that was in just awful shape. The uh, the uh, button was broken on it. The uh, uh, it, it was just horrible, and uh, because I had nothing else to do, so I thought I would just rebuild it, and so I got it finished. My uh, A string broke on me here just today, so I haven't had a chance to replace it. But this is probably one of the nicest violins that I have, and I'm I'm really really excited about it. It's I, all I want. It's the only one I want to play now, and I've got some pretty expensive violins. But this one, the, uh, the the tone is really nice. But what's really what I find is really nice on it is the the response, the, the quick response on uh, when you put your bow to it. it the, the notes just jump off the violin. She's a beauty. Um, so, anyways, just uh, thought I'd bring everybody up to date on what's going on here at the Prairie Fiddler, and uh, that I'm. Still in business and lots of a uh, good selection of violins. I've got, I've got some uh, German violins. I've got uh, Czech violins, uh, some good Chinese ones, and uh, in all price ranges, right from, oh, let's say, a hundred dollars all the way to four or five thousand dollars. So, uh, give me a call if you're, if you're in the market for a violin or if you have a, a violin that you're looking to get. Uh, refurbished or uh, even just a bridge replaced or something like that. I'm uh, I'm not a certified luthier, but uh, I can do most. Um, I won't say superficial, superficial, but uh, I, I won't do structural work on violins uh, unless you really, really want me to. I do it on my own violins, the ones that I. The ones that I uh, buy and repair to resell, but if I'm repairing for somebody else, uh, uh, it's not likely that I'll do serious structural work. But if uh, if there's some that needs to be done, well, I can certainly pass you on to uh, to somebody that's uh, that's qualified to do it. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, and uh, have yourself a good night. This is the Prairie Fiddler from saying farewell from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Have a good night.